my sound is on and I started the coffee. What more do I need to do? Just need some other people to show up. <laughs> well, last week, nobody else. Did. Oh, there was one other guy and must be a new member. I didn't recognize him. Oh, yeah. And me and we, you know, we never could connect. So. Well, I'm, like, not there, I'm not there this week to set it up, so I'm not sure if it's going to get done. You're at your beach house? That's what the sign says on the wall. Yeah. So uh, your area is having pretty nice weather right now. Yeah, it's supposed to be in the mid-90s today. Yeah. Well, that's what it'll be here. Yeah, well. It's so supposed to be that there. But it's, it's been that way for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we were in uh, Arizona in April, and it was pretty cold. Yeah. Unusually cold for there, so. Were you in Phoenix area? Yeah, Scottsdale. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hey! Where were you last week? Yeah. It was set up last week. I set it up. I couldn't connect, though. Yeah. I checked the website. So I grew up with a ham radio channel. Did you? Yes, big time. And it was, that's how I knew where to go home. Because I could see it. All the other houses, right? Yeah, it was very tall. But my dad had a huge huge spell nut. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start the meeting. I did it. <laughs> awesome. I don't see a sergeant in arms, so I'm sort of kind of filling in. Over there, fly over there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God and the indivisible hope of liberty and justice for all. And the four way test is a memory. Number one is the truth. Number two is a concern. Number three, goodwill and better friendships. Number four, all concern. Excellent. I know number five. Number five, fine. <laughs> awesome. And number six, I don't know, but I think we need to take you back to the base. You need to take me out. <laughs> I think corn should be done. Yeah, yeah. That's corn. Corn with the free butter. Corn with the free butter. And the, speaking from the corn, the corn queen. <laughs> awesome. So thanks for that. And then uh, do we have an inspiration from comment from Gary? We do from 1913. Wow. For the ladies in the crowd, you don't have to excuse it, but 
just for a moment, stop and contemplate what constitutes a successful man and woman. He must, he or she must possess these qualifications, honesty, ability, initiative, enthusiasm, tact, and sincerity. It was delivered by Russell Greiner, Rotary Club of Kansas City, Missouri on 1913 at the Rotary Convention. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. You want to repeat that back, Chris? Number one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Gary. I appreciate that. And so we do have a, a guest in the audience. We have Sarah over here from the farmer's market who will be our speaker later today. So later today will be in a little bit. So are we going all day long? Is that what you're yeah, saying? later today? <laughs> all day. <laughs> you want a sandwich, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. <clears throat> So with that, we have a couple of uh, birthdays this week. We have uh, Sean Fredericks, who isn't here. I think he's actually moved, but he's still a member. And then uh, Jolie Munger, <clears throat> who's a new member, who her birthday is May 11th. And then we have May 13th, Scott Smith. <clears throat> His birthday is on the 13th. And then uh, there's no spouses' birthdays unless we don't know about them. And then anniversaries, same. And then Rotary anniversaries, May 9th, we have the Secretary of State, Steve Hobbs. And then we have anniversary, a Rotary anniversary, May 10th, Sean Frederick as well. So with that, there we are. And then we have a couple uh, members that have put an application in. Lance Morgan over here has put an application in. And that'll do the again. Hasn't been approved yet, but it's in. <laughs> so anyhow. Anyhow, um, with that, I'll just a little brief of, of the conference we had. Don and I were up there, and I think James Monroe was up there. He was doing photography up there and interviewing people. It was really pretty good. It was, um, I think, I've been to a number of them, and it seemed like the first continuity, you know, they talked like Friday night about indigenous people, and then it kind of rolled into some more indigenous people. And so there was a lot of continuity, and then it went into how do we, you know, bring peace to the world and things like that. So it was pretty intense. And they had a, some entertainment, <clears throat> a couple of uh, different types of dancers were out there in the after in the evening. And uh, it was quite, quite a, a fun time it went by pretty fast. I thought it was just whoosh. and the food was stellar. The food was stellar. <clears throat> and I don't remember if you guys remember when they No, that was a different meeting. But anyhow, they up there, they have garbage in the hotel room. They have like this little scupper that holds plastics and another scupper that holds paper and stuff. Then the third scupper was the food scraps scupper. Can you say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the food scrap scrapper <laughs> was in the hotel where you put banana peels and bread, whatever it's food goes in there, then someone you know picks it up. <clears throat> and at the economic alliance meeting, they talk of, about having that is a garbage can in your kitchen and it grinds up the bones and everything and dehydrates it because it kind of sort of still food and they take it out and feed it to chickens and kind of recycle it that way not composting it and so they do that so i asked the hotel people there and they said they even do that at their home you know so there's a requirement for them a company comes by and the, the garbage people picks up these different buckets and a food scupper bucket and I don't know if they compost it, I didn't go down that road, but um, so when I was at the Economic Alliance meeting, they talked about that here in America. So I think that's gonna be coming probably, you know, mandatory garbage separated out, pretty soon there'll be the food thing because the biggest problem they said was methane gas from food scraps in the dump. So there's your lesson for the day. It'll be a test later. <laughs> Anyhow, <clears throat> that was a good conference. Don, do you have anything to add to that or the conference part? Uh, no, but uh, I echo that. It was uh, a. It was very fast moving, and b. It's uh, a lot, a lot of food. Yeah. I mean, I'm not used to eating three meals a day like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. <laughs> it was good food. And then next district conference will be in Mount Vernon at the high school. A one day thing. With some events on Friday and some events on Sunday, but it'll be a one-day thing. Very 
inexpensive, so anybody could probably go. So and and uh, the theme, uh, not so much the theme, but the intent is to engage families as much as possible. So they're going to have fun stuff on Friday, clothing actually. Yeah. And then fun stuff on Sundays, kind of the impression I got. And again, families, kids are welcome. You know, outside of the actual meeting, the meeting will be strictly on Saturday. So it's in Mount Vernon, it's Saturday, it'll be really easy to actually go do business if that's what you want to do, but you can also engage more. Yeah. So it's, uh, that's our new our new uh, uh, head guy, David, working that one. Yeah, he was a great guy. He kind of brought that into the the fold where they were he lives in new york i believe and he's on the rotary international board of directors young guy like 42 and great speaker big voice talked about what don just said family's important um and they had some kind of yearly thing <clears throat> it's usually 100 people show up well this year they had 200 because they opened it up to the family and they had family they had it at some like one of those zone parks or whatever, where there's all kinds of rides and things to do. So they had the meeting and then the spouse that really wasn't a member would take, you know, the, the family out and do all these fun things and they'd meet back for food and stuff like that. So it sounded pretty successful to engage and bring together more people. So that was kind of cool. <clears throat> so they're going to try and do that up in Mount Vernon. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to move into the treasurer's report. Uh, very little activity. Um, we did have a couple more, or at least one more dues paid. But we did. Okay, we're working uh, on that. I already talked to a couple of people about that we paid. Yeah. And I think in both cases so far, at least with somebody, they didn't know what they had to pay. So. Okay. And then we'll we'll start setting up monthly billing if you prefer that or one time check or whatever. So and now we have <clears throat> the secretary's report. Did you remember how to how get? How long do I have? Twenty five minutes. You got twenty five minutes. <laughs> you can go to sleep while I do this. All right. Uh, next board meeting is Tuesday, uh, and Brian's office. Uh, it, it's a reminder that it's my birthday. Okay. So cool. bring 82 presents. Bring some hard boiled eggs. Yeah, those two. <laughs> um, Rotary International has sent out a survey which closes on Sunday, May 14th, uh, at the end of the day. The survey centers on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it does take about 15 minutes to uh, do. And uh, it's just a um, whole bunch of questions on, on the topics and talks about your club, the district, and Rotary International in general. And um, so if you get a chance, go ahead and, and take a look at it and maybe fill it out. Um, and then um, from the chamber, uh, they're hosting the Member social at the Bit of Taste, which is Debbie French's place on May 18th from 4.30 to 6. Membership mingle. I'm doing this since I'm on the board as a representative of Rotary. Um, their local uh, member mingle and networking is on Tuesday, May 23rd at 8 a.m. at the Buzz Inn. Um, meet with the mayor on Friday, May 19th from 8 to 10. Starbucks in Frontier Village. And then um, from that, there's the first annual Lake Stevens Community Draft Sale on Saturday and Sunday, June 3rd and 4th, uh, from 9 to 4. So if you've got things you want to get rid of, that's a good time to do it. That's it. All is good. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. <clears throat> and then, uh, Don, do you have anything? Uh, nothing to add. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the other stuff. And then um, <clears throat> I have just in the middle here, I don't know if anybody knew, I, I, got, I met a guy up there at the district conference, Michael Bates, whose wife is the sister of Dell Thompson's wife. Can you believe this? <laughs> <laughs> They're sisters, don't try. <laughs> 
any other sisters. But the, the bottom line was um, that, so Mike Bates was Dell Thompson's brother-in-law, I guess, or however that works, but anyhow, he passed away. So I don't know if anybody knew Dell Thompson, but he passed away a while ago. And I think they'll have some kind of celebration of life coming up and I think it'll, there'll be a notice out. So anyhow, I, I believe he um, owned the, is that Windermere over there? Well, owned the Windermere real estate company over there. Yeah. Didn't he pass away like two years ago? No, I think what he said a couple of months ago, it's been a while. They didn't want to say, I don't know what, what the reason was, but not putting it in the paper and stuff. So <clears throat> anyhow, that's what he told me. So anyhow, there's that. So, <clears throat> and then, uh, so we now have committee chair reports. I don't, Ron, hello. Hello. How you doing? We're doing great. It's just as sunny here as it is there, I'll bet. Yeah. No, we're uh, doing good. I had our uh, second uh, fireside last Tuesday. Had a big attendance, three of us. So, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It was a good time. Good. So, remember, uh, second Tuesday of every month. Yep. What Seven time? 7 p.m. Good. It was on the website at one point, but I don't. I looked again; it's not there anymore. So I'll, I'll put we'll it get on. that back up there. Yeah, I'll get it on, Ron. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Ron. Yep. So uh, I don't see Brian Rose here, but I think he's got some uh, appointments out there for us to sign up and help with the torch down and a few other things. Next so, um, Saturday um, from uh, eight o'clock till whatever. If it's, a, if it's a good day, we should be able to get it done. Um, for those of you that don't know, about two or three years ago, we did a project that we paid for at Highland Elementary where we took symbols and put them on the ground and forced them in so that they'll be there for a lot longer than uh, most uh, of us. Should be there for 10, 15, 20 years, hopefully. Um, only case is we had one one person uh, kind of burn his leg. Uh, his pants, all his pants. Yeah, but he's an accident ready to happen. Now we're going to bring a fire to him. Um, as many of you can uh, show up, uh, we'll probably do the cleaning first, torch it down, let it dry, and then start doing the, the torching. Uh, I've let the school district know, Scott Addison know that we're good to go on that date. And hopefully the weather will be just as good as, as it is now and be able to get this done. Yeah. We're not the only, we did not pay for the uh, decals. That was paid for by the school, but they asked us if we could put it down since we have a district in front of us. Yeah, perfect. So I hope to see a lot of us there. I did see there's like six, seven, eight of us signed up for that. Yeah, there's going to be two or three or four of us that aren't going to be able to get there until about 10 o'clock. Because of our investment. Yeah, is that the same time? Yeah. Told yeah. oh, Brian not to do that. <laughs> no, not really, but okay. No, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks for that. And I don't see Jim Steinrich here. I think he's doing a little bit better now, but still. And then international services. I don't see Linda here. Okay. And then I don't see membership here, Kyle Strand. And vocational services. I think um, Josie, our exchange student, went to CBEC last weekend or the weekend before and did a bunch of studies and things like that. That's really an intense program if you're the student. So it's amazing. And uh, so we're getting close to here again, trying to vet the host families who've signed up to raise their hands and say, I want to do it. So, and you're kind of familiar with that. You know, all three of our exchange students, we had the students for the entire year. Wow. So it wasn't, we never rotated got like out. a rotation thing. <laughs> happen, huh? Well, that's cool, kind of, I guess. Yeah, well, cool. Okay, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Scholarships are on their way. They're moving forward with that. I think they're going to be, I don't know if they have or they're going to start doing their uh, interview process. So they haven't done it yet. It's supposed to, I want to say we might be doing it on Monday and Tuesday. But I haven't got the word back from last. Okay. And no technical people. That's kind of a bummer. Voc vocational 
students or whatever. Somehow we'll have to figure out how to made inroads with uh, with out there to get them to do it. Um, and I don't know how we do it. Uh, we it, we'll have to <clears throat> we got all year to figure that out to next year to figure out how we can engage that situation maybe we have the students engaged to, kind of like they do now you know up to high school they fill out an application and go through all that maybe that's something we think about for them so okay maybe through creators on we'll have a little bit more avenue for that yeah yeah that yeah. might be Dan Sutter is in charge of um, like the Snow Vital group at the high school night board and having information regarding scholarships. And he received that. Yeah. Yeah. I think in the past it's been the instructors had to write a letter about a student and that somehow there's a disconnect or nobody wants to do it or I'm not sure what it is, but we'll, we'll have to dive deep on that and try and help, help to facilitate better next time. <clears throat> and then we have IT, Chris Martin, and then so program, we have Kendra. Are you there, Kendra? I am here. Awesome. Um, Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we have the scholarship uh, award ceremony coming up. And also I'm, I'm nailing down a date for the um, committee for the Lake Stevens Pride Festival. We have our first Pride Festival happening this summer. And so I'm talking with them, getting the next date available um, for them to come present about that. Awesome, cool. Well, thank you for that. <clears throat> okay, so hey, any- Chris, just a reminder so that everybody knows, the scholarship uh, awards is gonna be at Greater Zone. And um, we, have, we can come in the night before if we want. I told Tracy this uh, and do the setup if we want to. Okay. So they're all in, Chris and his mom and Good. his wife. So <clears throat> supporting. Yeah, that'll be kind of a neat place. We need to have stuff. a sign out here yeah. that says that our meeting is going to be at Greater Zone. So I need to get that done. Yeah. And Tracy's kind of in charge of setting that up. I am taking care of decorations and the light uh, breakfast that we're that we're gonna have. So it's okay. Th the same menu, the um, <clears throat> granola and fruit on yogurt and just light muffins and such. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <clears throat> Anything on communications? No. Talk to Tracy about the donation forms. Yeah, well, I got it on the list here. Okay. <laughs> okay, Tracy. How about I? I just I turned mine in finally. Yes, you did. Thank you. I got ten uh, forms back. So if I don't read your name, it means it would be great if you could give me uh, the if you could um, grade in. them or score score them. Um, I've got Jack, Gary, Johanna, Ron. Lori, Steve, Chris Smith, Chris Vallow, Rand, and Scott. So the more evaluations that I can get in, that I can compile, the more we are gonna have a better feel of what the whole club wants and not what this small group of people think we should fund. So we're trying to do this a little bit more scientifically. Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, so nice. email them, take a picture, text it to me, 425-418. 7793, email it uh, tracydelorme at hotmail.com. Awesome. Thank Great you. Job. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Today. <laughs> oh, um, today or tomorrow? Today or tomorrow? Sunday, I'm going to compile them all. Okay. Awesome. Board Are you coming to the board meeting or no? I, um, when Tuesday is it? Night. Tuesday night at 5 30. I need to check my schedule at work if I work until six, but I might be oh, able okay. to pop over. So yeah, I'll try yeah. Tuesday. Okay, uh, or after work, we can wait. Yeah. Or we can have another meeting <clears throat> like Wednesday or something, whatever. Don't sweat okay. it. Don't sweat it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so since we... It, around, yeah, okay, good. So a sergeant of arms, anybody want to try this? Sergeant of Arms routine. Okay, awesome. Great. 
Thank you, Sam. You can get his revenge now. Yeah. The politicians asking for money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a natural. <laughs> it's a natural. All right, Sarah. You can uh, pick out a winning number here for us. Read the last uh, three or four. Last three is six one seven. Boring. I'll take that. Yeah, that gets the fiber in there. Oh, I see a winning duck in there. <laughs> Good. Good. In there. We're at hundred and eighty nine dollars right now. Wow. All right. All right. Come on. How much is it? Hundred eighty nine. Oh, oh, too bad. You win five dollars. Congratulations! <laughs> and I'll be back for that. Yep. <laughs> awesome. All right. Any fines? We have any self fines? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was very late. I'll find my. Okay. <laughs> That. Very fine. Anybody want to find somebody else? <laughs> I'll find Gary. <laughs> okay, well, how much do you want to find Gary? I'll find him three dollars and I'll put three dollars in. Three dollars. Yeah, just because. Just because. <laughs> so Gary, you can find. You can find him back. I'll right? find him. Hey. <laughs> I find myself because Tracy asked for the form and I didn't get it to her for like 10 days. And I've got this guilt complex about it. So I paid a substantial fine this morning just, just because I had response in it. Awesome. You know what? That's a great idea. If you did not fill out the form for Tracy, yes, you've been fined a dollar. So yeah, I'm gonna come around and you can put your buck in. Like this, shake the bucket, dollar change. <laughs> oh, this is for the three that I. <laughs> well, I I'm married, so I'm always guilty. Yeah, <laughs> right. it's mandatory, isn't it, Larry? It's twenty-five dollars, <laughs> <point>, Larry. <laughs> All right, anyone else? <laughs> Can't find the new guy. No. <laughs> All right. Oh, there's a lot of On the TV screen. Okay, Larry, you're fine. <laughs> Johanna. Okay. Oh, Johanna's fine. I, I have a lot. Aloha. Okay. All right, Aloha. let's do Happy Bucks. Where are we going to start? Who wants to start with Happy Bucks? All right, we're going to start at the back. Yeah. 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 Gary, I'm happy because the legislature is up and you're back, but you have to go back. Yeah, two things. <coughs> Hopefully, only for a day. My grandson was born on Christmas. I always feel bad for him, right? My birthday is Sunday, so put it together. Think about it, right? <laughs> so I never buy my mom anything. I just tell her that I was her gift. <laughs> um, I'm happy to be here. Um, I did find myself a couple of dollars. Um, I was gone the last couple of weeks. We were in Mexico and then also in LA, so Georgia, supporting my friend who's becoming a food exercise instructor. But I'm happy to be here with you guys and excited for another great weekend. Awesome. Did you have a rotary meeting down there? In Mexico, or yeah. no, there was no meeting. Was good. If there's three of you, there's three of you. Yeah. 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 Um, shared a house there and then went to Salulita and stayed in a bungalow on the beach, which was like incredible. And then we went back to the Sheraton in Puerto Verde and did all inclusive for a night with Chris Wayne. So we just got around. Cool. <laughs> Brian, I go two weeks tomorrow. <laughs> 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 
All right, Lauren. Okay. Uh, I've had three guys working their tails off over at my house this week, preparing my yard for my robot. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and I think it's going to be the robot's going to be tested today. Cool. I love it. Yeah. Robot will be happy. I'll love it too if it works. <laughs> you can get videos so we can all see. Yeah. So Lori, the tax man is here. Yes. Uh, here we go. Oh, I'm fine. Um, so um, we went and spent a little time with my son, daughter-in-law, and more importantly, that new, new precious baby. Cool. I got to travel. That was awesome. Weather's beautiful, started planting the garden. So, and the zucchini that some people said they wanted is now expanding. So. <laughs> awesome. Barbara right, Michelle. Um, so, I'm happy today. My daughter graduates from law school on Monday. So, we celebrate all weekend. That's awesome. Well, I, I, I don't know why I would say I'm happy. I've been doing nothing but spring cleaning outside mm -hmm. this week. And it's, uh, I tell you, it's really strange how it could be like cold in Seattle, and the moment the sun comes out, it's too hot. To do <laughs> you know, I, I look at the thermometer, it's 67 degrees. I'm sweating like a kid. <laughs> but I'm happy you now. Awesome. <laughs> all right, we'll come all the way to the back. Uh, I'm happy my wisdom of future is cracking. Seems to be going pretty well, and that my brother came up to keeping yeah. company through misery. So, as I always say, misery doesn't love company, it's a requirement. <laughs> That's a requirement. A <clears throat> uh, couple extra happy dollars for missing last week. Happy to be here. Happy to study out finally. Sir, you got a happy. Uh, Happy, you can do one without it. So, you're a speaker. Okay, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. Well, what am I happy for? I'm happy to break out my grill this weekend, celebration of Mother's Day, and we're doing a breakfast at my house. So, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. What time should we all be there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not too sure yet. <laughs> I'm come over. Uh, and then secondly, I joined a crew team, so I'm back on the water, so I'm super happy about that. Oh, cool. Nice. Which crew team did you join? Everett. Cool. And, and I'm doing Lake Stevens, too. Yeah. Or North Shore. Uh, North, North Shore. North Shore. County. Yeah, NCC. Like that. NCC. That's over by Davies. Yep. Yeah. All right, Joyce. I'm happy to be here, but I don't have any money. We're we're happy to have you here too, and I will pay. I'll pay your happy dollar. I think I owe a couple of money. Chris, I'm coming to you next. Okay, good. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy that everybody's here today, and I'm very happy that uh, Sam is doing the Surgeon of Arms today. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, Surgeon of Arms. Yeah, <laughs> strong arms. Strong <laughs> repair. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay, let's go, uh, Tracy. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm going to put in a happy thirty dollars. Monday, uh, May twenty second is Dave and my thirtieth anniversary. So, unfortunately, I have to work that day, but we're going to spend the weekend in San Francisco. So I'm not going to be here next week. Um, I'm going to submit uh, some fines. Also, I'm sorry I couldn't be there today, and I'm sorry I have to leave a little early for the speaker. So, anyway. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Tracy. Tracy. All right, Ron. Uh, got a happy 10, one for the weather, uh, two for uh, it's Nurses Appreciation Week. So to Amy and all the other nurses, uh, the doctors get all the fame, but they truly make the doctors look good. So thank you. Thanks, Ron. That's really nice. Johanna. You're mute. You're muted. Joanna, you're muted. We can't hear. Oh. Oh, well. She looks happy. Oh, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> Sorry, I'm over in Moses Lake this weekend attending cool. a pageant. So I'll be putting in my happy dollars. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, Kendra. Take it off mute. 
Kendra, are you there? Kendra, we'll come back to you. We don't hear you. Larry. Hey. I'll, uh, I, I send in monthly happy dollars. We appreciate that. To your club and, and to the Green Valley Club. That's nice of you. Well, what are you happy about? What am happy. I happy about? Oh, Linda yeah. comes home tomorrow. Oh, She's in Snohomish. Did wow. you say hi to her? <laughs> didn't see her. We haven't seen her, Larry, but we'll look for her. <laughs> uh, maybe she's out with her boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> awesome. uh, running, running around with the granddaughter. Thanks, Larry. All right, Ken, we're coming back to you. All right, no, Kendra. I'll be gone next week. I'll be over in uh, Wenatchee with the uh, TIV, but I'll, I'll pay a, a pre fund for that. Okay. A pre function. Awesome. Thank you, Sam, for doing this Sergeant of Arms duty. I'm pretty happy. Yeah, good. <clears throat> and with that being said, uh, our guest speaker, I don't know if you have a presentation to plug in the laptop. Okay, that, that makes it easy. So we have Sarah Johnson, the director of the farmer's market, and she's going to give us an update on the plan. Do you want me to stand at the podium? Or? You can stand wherever you like, okay. but as long as you're in front of us. Okay. I move around. <laughs> Not out in the parking lot. <laughs> Sarah Johnson. If you want to see your welcome. My name is Sarah Dylan Jensen. I am the director of the Lake Stevens Farmer's Market. And if any of you know me, I know some familiar faces here. I also run the Snohomish Farmer's Market, going on my ninth year doing that, and the Sandwich Farmer's Market, my fifth year doing that. So I'm all about farmer's markets. And I could stand up here for like three hours talking about farmer's markets and why they're awesome. But I started a podcast for that. So you can actually listen to the podcast about like the stories behind the tents. A lot of people think that um, farmer's markets just happen. And I actually have a clipboard that says farmers markets don't just happen. They take a lot of work, a lot of energy, um, but they're a win-win-win for the communities. Uh, the first win is that we're supporting our local agriculture. We're supporting our local farms. This county is rich with agricultural lands and we want to keep it that way. So by supporting farmers markets, you're supporting those farmers that still have that land that they can use that gives back to us. The second is that it's a really wonderful business incubator for smaller local businesses that want to try something out. It's a less expensive way than getting into a brick and mortar. They can come set up their tent. They can try different things. And I have had the privilege of knowing seven vendors that have opened brick and mortar stores in the Snohomish County area. So that's really, really cool. And even cooler is that they keep coming back to the farmer's market to do their 10 by 10 tent, which is a lot of work for a small business owner that has a brick and mortar, but they feel like it's so worth the marketing and the community. And that leads me to my last one is that it brings together that third place. If you've ever heard of a third place, you have your home, you have your work, and then you have that third place where you gather with neighbors and friends and family, and you can go and you can feel comfortable and safe. Um, it also helps the local businesses that surround the farmer's market. So I know like here in Lake Stevens, Francisco's, Jay's, Lake Stevens Donuts, everybody is really happy that we're there, which is a really great feeling. Um, a lot of times people are like, oh, we don't want to put it in a crowded area because it's going to affect parking. It does. I'm not going to lie. It affects parking every single week. Um, but we just feel really good about what we do. With Lake Stevens this year, our goal, uh, we've done this at Stanwood and Snohomish, is to create a kids club. It's been something, you know, we're going into our fourth year of the Lake Stevens Farmers Market. It opened during COVID, um, which was a feat in and of itself, of course. And then, you know, the last couple of years, we've still had some of those restrictions, but now we feel like the community has been asking for a kids club, and we really want to start that. So, what the kids club is at a farmer's market is actually called the pop club and pop stands, stands for power of produce. And it's a nationwide program that started quite a few years ago. I think like Chipotle was one of the biggest sponsors of getting it started, but it's morphed into all of these different markets nationwide kind of taking it under their own hat and doing with it what they want. But there's a bunch of curriculum that's already out there. So I kind of pitched an idea um, just put it out to the community. Would anybody, anybody be interested 
I have enough on my plate on market day. Um, if you've ever seen me down there, I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off, um, usually in some sort of dress because it's more comfortable, but I'm just running around with my clipboard. A kids club is a whole other beast in and of itself. So the kids club is kind of threefold. Again, like our motto is threefold. It's to help teach kids about local agriculture and why it's important to support our local farmers. It's teaching them healthy eating habits and kind of learning about fruits and vegetables that maybe they haven't tried before. And then three, it's also learning healthy habits as far as exercise and being outside and gardening and growing their own food. So I had a few volunteers actually offer up their time to get this whole thing started kind of with my oversight. Um, a few community members just seriously donating their time to get the curriculum kind of pull from what the, pop, the national pop program has. And then get the activities going, get the schedule going, and then start getting the supply list going. And we're really excited about it because this program also gives kids at the end of their activity for the day, it gives them $2 and little wooden tokens with carrots on them to spend with their farmers at the farmer's market. They can save them up, they can use them that day, they can pool them with their friends. And it's really interesting to see kind of the financial literacy take place with these kids where they they use their $2 wisely or their parents chip in a little bit extra so they can get the thing they want. The farmers are really, really supportive of this program where oftentimes I see, you mentioned zucchinis. You know, sometimes in August, they're trying to offload those zucchinis, the farmers are. So kids can get for $2 a zucchini this big and they are just floored that $2 can get them something that could feed them for a couple of days. The other thing that comes into this financial literacy is what I've seen, at least in Snohomish and Stanwood, is a lot of low-income families use this program because $2 is a big deal to them, and $2 for their kids to have to go shopping is a really big deal to them. So it's been really heartwarming to watch kids grow up and learn these habits and then return as shoppers as teens and adults. So with that said, we have financial need for this program. Um, we reimburse the farmers dollar for dollar for every token they turn in. That's not something that we take from them or expect them to donate. And then we have a bunch of supplies to get ready. We're trying to be eco-conscious when it comes to, you know, we don't want kids to do an activity, take it home and throw away. So we're looking at like seedlings and starts, ladybug day, um, you know, building a healthy crate, fruit and veggie, painting where we take some apples and stuff like that and they can do stamping. Um, but yeah, it, it takes money. And um, that's why I'm just, you know, super excited to announce this program. I know Digital Face Media has already sponsored us for a thousand dollars, which really got us off the ground and meant that we could at least start the program. Um, but I would like to have quality supplies. You know, it doesn't just come in financial. If anybody knows of anybody that has access to, I don't know, 2000 popsicle sticks or paper plates or those types of things, we can take all the help we can get. And if anybody wants to help, you know, on a kid's day activity, that would be welcome as well. Um, these two ladies that are going to be doing this, I'm sure, are going to find quickly that they're a little bit overwhelmed. And I can step in as as best I can, but I'm managing the other children, which are my vendors at the market. <laughs> uh, so, like I said, I have my have my hands full, and they have a lot of problems too. I think the kid ta kid table is probably going to be easier than managing vendors. So, I would love if you have any questions or anything like that for me. Super happy to answer. Um, but otherwise. I could, like I said, I could stand up here all day and talk about farmers markets. Sarah, have you made a formal request of our club for any funding? I have not. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> I think uh, Kendra for getting me on the schedule today. That was really awesome. Yeah, good. Yeah, you can show me. We think all like the farmers market is a good place to see different people and and the vegetables and all the stuff people bring are amazing. <clears throat> yeah, and the food trucks. The food trucks are really great too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many kids are you expecting to participate each week in this? So if history serves with Snohomish, um, we serve usually 80 to 100 kids each week at Snohomish. How many at any given time? Um, we do it for the duration of the farmer's market. So I think I've seen a lineup of like 10 or 10 or 12 at one time, but the goal is to have the booth in the shade under the mill, kind of on the the lake facing side. So they've got the awning as cover and that they can kind of gather around all three sides versus trying to stick them in like a 10 by 10 in between a bunch of vendors or something like that. Nice. 
I know we've been talking a lot with Farmers Markets Creator Zone, but we definitely love to like help out on like do a cool partnership on one or absolutely yeah figure out how to merge. Yeah, I knew you were busy getting everything started, so I don't want to overwhelm you too. <laughs> but yeah, we're definitely in to support this. It's awesome. Awesome. And just a um, just a couple of numbers uh, to kind of give you some context. In Snohomish, our market started um, when I took it over in 2015. We started with about 40 vendors. Um, it had been going for quite some time at about that level. And last week was our opening day. Um, we're on Thursdays in Snohomish, so I'm a little hoarse from running around the market yesterday. But we opened last week with 115 vendors. And our kids club has expanded now. There we have the WSU extension office that kind of runs the kids club because they saw the need and they can actually provide staffing for that because we get the consistent attendance. I'd love for like Stevens to be added to that next year, but I kind of have to prove that first with them. Um, they also run Stanwood. But overall, our vendor revenue at that market is a million dollars um, every year. So that's a million dollars going back into small businesses in this community. Like Stevens. Uh, started and it blew my mind. Uh, our first year was $375,000. When I took over Snohomish, it was roughly at like $250,000 and it had been running for 21 years. So to say that Lake Steven started at, you know, well over a quarter of a million dollars, last year we hit a half a million dollars at Lake Steven. So it's really, really cool to see it grow and it's really great to see the community support something. It's great to see the need and then fill the need and then have the support for it. That doesn't always happen. I have run a failed farmer's market before, so I know it doesn't always happen like that. So how much is Lake Steven running? Coming in? Coming in? Yeah. Uh, it was uh, just under $500,000. Oh, okay. Yeah, not for the, the market itself. That's not my salary. Um, that's the total vendor revenue. Everybody gets that confused. Oh, like, yeah, you, should yeah, okay. you should be driving a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, that's a total overall vendor sales. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's and number. yeah. And last year we added the SNAP and EBT matching program at Lake Stevens, which is also a feat in and of itself. But that came out with a bang too. And I think we had uh, roughly three to $4,000 in um, SNAP match and EBT token sales. The vendor seed is a big positive thing with money. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And community building. There's a lot of things that happen at a farmer's market that may not be a transaction right there that day, the but the connection later, we've gotten uh, one of our farms in Snohomish ends up doing a lot of the produce for restaurants in downtown Snohomish. Yeah, so. It just sounds like that 100% like matches like our four-way test, right? Yeah. I think that, um, yeah, well, we should, I would, I would love to support you. I would love to like volunteer, like, Twice a month, but mm -hmm. it's usually for Wednesday. I would love to see some support from mm -hmm. you. Yeah, the team, whether that's with what they're doing, right? You know, do like the like exercise element, mm -hmm. like have fun and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Who, uh, who, who, who are the two main people? Bailey, uh, Bailey Larson is one, and I know she's an art docent at one of our local elementary schools or middle schools. I'm not sure which one. And then Kira, I can't remember her last name off the top of my head, but she just wanted to be involved. Yeah. I know that we have our own booth, right? And we like advertise what we're doing and get out water. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's a way we can like do that together mm -hmm. where we have a piece of one rotarian at the kids club. Yeah. yeah. I'm super open. I'm sure they are too. <laughs> yeah. What's your budget on the FF? I'm on ten dollars, but yes, that's so much money to do this. Right. That can. Um, what I laid out just kind of based on the experience with Stanwood and Snohomish is about thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars. We have a thousand. I think I have a couple more coming in, a little bit smaller than that. Um, so we're on our way. Yeah. To me, that's that's a huge impact because mm -hmm. um, that little amount of money is a lot, or a little amount of money. Produces all these people coming in and right. Oh, that's a big, right. Big yeah. Buck. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just have some paperwork for you. We, okay. Uh, there's a formal request form that you need to submit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is it too late for this year's consideration? I have to talk to Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, get it to me as quickly as we can. I'll send out e another email. <laughs> And then people just can real quick um, score it. 
so we can include it. So there, I think the application's on the on the site. So okay. you can go out there and fill that out and get that in the day. Sure. And there might be an opportunity for people to come and explore that. We're going to be having an invite, I guess, Monday. Yeah, right. um, Sunday would be better. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'll do it. Again. If, <laughs> if you want to email me, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate you letting me talk and share about this. It's obviously my passion. I started a business 10 years ago and it's morphed into managing farmers markets. That's not what I went to school for because <laughs> I, that was not my in my career path, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, way more passion than corporate America. So is the market a nonprofit? Um, it is not. Um, I own it as like an entity under my LLC, but I run it like a nonprofit. I don't take anything from it. I just put all the money into a savings account so that it rolls over to next year because there's about roughly eight to ten thousand dollars in cost each year to get it going for permitting and marketing and all that kind of stuff so yeah it just sits in a bank account and i don't really touch it unless and i need supplies it's not, it's not, oh. no i try to run it as close as possible yeah. one, but most most of our part are not yeah. yeah essentially but there's not a non-profit Right. Yeah, we we tried kind of with the IRS, like it's a little bit difficult to become a 501c3 as a farmer's market. Um, there are some, but they all operate that way at most that I know. And we have parameters. We're, a, we're what's called a WSFMA market. So it's a Washington State Farmers Market Association. We have very strict credentials that I have to meet uh, as far as farms percentage of their sales versus artisans and crafts and things like that. And we're not allowed to have direct sales or anything like that in the market. How do we hear your podcast? <laughs> it's um, the Market Maven podcast. It is on every streaming channel. Um, yeah, I, I interview some of my farmers. I talk about how I got started with this and some of the horror stories that I've experienced um, in a fun, lighthearted way. <laughs> yeah. I clear this up podcast. You don't see it, you just hear the mm -hmm. radio. Go. You can listen to it while you're doing your yard work yeah. or, yeah, uh, not video. No, no, not yet. Hear the radio, though. What? While you're cranking it? <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, any other questions? Let's have a comment. Yeah. Sarah does a great job. I work with her in different communities, and uh, she's being very gracious when she talks about some of the problems that come. She she's had to go through some really serious, unfair things, and so she's truly a gracious person and doing a great job. And we've done Farmers Market Month for June the last few years. We're actually going to transition that to match the national and do that in August from the county perspective. But. I just want to publicly thank Sarah. Yeah, she, thank you. She's done a great job. Yeah, you mentioned several, actually, even more amazing. Thank you so much. I have something else to say, really quick. Um, those of you who heard this um, nice presentation, um, please just shoot me an email if you've already e the people I read off. If you've already um, emailed me, grade the uh, lakes, the food, the <laughs> the grid, the grid. Thank, right. Yes, just send me a grade um, and I'll add it to your score sheet. Sarah, we do want still something in writing so that we can show, hey, we graded everybody and this is what they gave us. So we're not just giving out money. I mean, we want to give money out. <laughs> and then, yes, <laughs> Sarah, if you want to just email me uh, that your form, uh, Tracy Delorme at hotmail.com then I will send that out again to the club, uh, but we can at least get you added on as quick as possible. So the 10 people I read off, just send me another email with the scores of those, um, of the questions that we, that for the donation score sheet. Okay, <clears throat> great. Thanks for flexibility of that. Yeah, and I gotta go. So see you later. Thank okay, you. see ya, thanks. Yeah, bye. And so uh, Sarah, we have a $25 donation given to the Lake Stevens Education Foundation in your honor in the farmer's market. So yeah, that's awesome. Any other questions for the good of the whole or the whole of the good or whatever? <laughs> okay. Thanks for being here. <laughs>
That's it. Reporting.